What's up you guys? Are you ready to get to some camping? Because I know I am. So for this adventure, we're going to be traveling around to a couple of campgrounds in the great state of Nevada and combining them all into one big massive awesome adventure. So what do you say? We get right to it. Uh. Kind of funny to be hiking through the sand dunes to get to a fishing spot that's not on the coast and you know the view isn't too bad either Now you guys may be familiar with these little guys because they are not very fun, but these are little burrs. And they are a seed, a little seed pod, and the plant that grows them uses these little spikes on them in order to spread the seed. The cool thing about these little guys is if you look really close, there's tons of little tiny hooks on the end of each of these little thorns. Now the way that those little hooks work is they'll hook into like animals fur or people's clothes and then they are dispersed, the seeds are dispersed via the animal's movement. So as the animal walks along the burr might fall off then and uh, eventually it'll be buried and it'll kind of grow up into a new plant. Velcro was actually made because of these guys, it was inspired by these little seeds. And that's a thing called biomimicry which is where people will look at the way that life nature has adapted to do certain things and you can copy it. You can copy it to make a synthetic product that will work in your favor. And Velcro is made the same way as these little guys. It's got all these little hooks on the end and then it will latch onto the fuzzy side of the Velcro and it sticks together perfectly. But yeah, it's a very cool little way of seed dispersal. partly cloudy tonight, so it's kind of hard to see some of the stars, but there are quite a few visible. There's the moon way up there. I've been using this interesting little app on my phone that allows you to see some of the, or all of the stars, really. Um, you just point it around, there's different constellations that you can see, and there's the moon, and the cool thing is it'll also show you the trail that it's going to take, so if you go ahead and click on it if I can reach with my thumb there it'll give you a little tidbit of information as well as telling you when it's gonna be where so if you want to film like a time-lapse with it setting behind the mountains or something then you just go oh at 4 45 a.m. then it's gonna be right on the horizon over there and then you can also see the constellations down in the southern hemisphere as well your Saturn. Interesting little way to incorporate technology to make your star viewing experience better. Alright you guys, so I'm sitting in the tent right now. It is nighttime and it is about 35 degrees out. And that's quite a bit different from when I left Texas. It was about 80 degrees. So I'm uh, just in a bit. But thanks to a wildlife that you guys may or may not have seen yet, 
I got a bit of a boo-boo today. Um, I was viciously attacked by a tree today, as you can see right there on the leg. I've been impaled and I didn't want to make my arm feel lonely, so I went ahead and did a number on that one as well. And it looks like I've been attacked by a rabid pug. But it's, it's nothing serious, just a, just a little uh, mark of adventure. So we're gonna go ahead and just clean it up. I have kind of washed off the wound um, in the lake. So now all I've got to do is apply some first aid cream just to prevent infections or anything and to kind of soothe it, I guess. It says soothing, so go ahead and soothe the wounds. But I'm just gonna take a little dab and rub it on to both my leg and onto my arm. But at this point it is kind of scabbed over, but I do feel it rubbing a lot on my pants and my sleeve and it also, the pus and blood and all that kind of sticks to my sleeve so I'm gonna just dress it in order to keep that from happening. My leg is so wide around that I'm not gonna bother putting a gauze pad on it because that would be too many resources. Ow, my leg here. Alrighty, and then for the arm, for my tiger scratches right there. Some tape on the sides of the gauze pad. I like that. Pop that out because I've got enough to secure it now. Alrighty, and hopefully that is enough to get the job done. So I'm gonna hit the hay and hopefully it is warmer in the morning. So, good night, guys. No scorpions, that's good. found a little arachnid here which is well known in the desert it is a scorpion We've got these guys in Texas I'm not sure if it's the same species or not but he is quite a little guy but a lot of the time with the smaller guys they have more venom because they need to pack more of a punch whereas the larger guys aren't as potent you can see him right there and he's got this little Pinchers up front and he's in a defensive position putting his tail up.
guys. When you think of Nevada, is this what you picture? My goodness, look at this view. Uh, but tonight, uh, before the sun goes down, we're going on a pronghorn hunt. And no, not that kind of hunt. The only shooting we'll be doing is with the cameras. But those guys are super cool because they're so fast. They're an amazingly fast little antelope-like creature that runs around in this area. But they've also got uh, bighorn sheep. There's fence lizards, lots of little reptiles like diamondback rattlesnakes and uh, gopher snakes and all sorts of cool stuff. So hopefully we'll come across something. But there's the sun just peeking over the hill. Being this close to the sun, you know, we're at a high elevation. It really makes things a lot sunnier. I know that. It's kind of redundant, but you do notice it for sure. The sun is just so bright up here. And I don't know if you can tell, but I even got a bit of sun. Now, if we look here, I wonder if these aren't some pronghorn tracks or just some other type of deer, but those definitely look like little hooves. So I think we're on the right track. Man, it is gorgeous. Now, there are lots of signs of animals here. There's lots of little rabbit poops and deer tracks and there are lots of jackrabbits here. It seems like a good portion of the substrate com is composed of jackrabbit poop, like that. And these guys are different from the normal cottontails that I see in Texas because they've got much larger feet and much higher ears. They've got little black tips on their ears. But they do sit amongst the shrubbery and they give you a little startle when they come flying out at light speed. Now there's also lots of evidence of horses and by evidence, I mean lots of poops from horses. And you might think, man, people sure ride a lot of horses around here. But actually, there's a pretty large population of wild horses. And the best way to go out and find animals, it seems like so far, is just go out at dusk and along the mountaintops or little hilltops, you can see the silhouettes of animals. And we actually saw some horses earlier and hoping to see some pronghorn maybe or some sheep. Here's some salt, lots of salt here. Well, I've seen lots of pronghorn tracks, but this looks to be evidence of what was once a porcupine. Uh, there's lots of fur, and then beneath the fur are the modified hairs, which are porcupine quills. Very pokey, and then the super long ones around, but I'm just wondering where the rest of the porcupine went, if he got eaten by something or what. I mean, if I was missing this much hair on myself, I don't think I'd be alive anymore. There's the little, there's the little quills. Ow. Alrighty guys, so we use the old watch this hand while I catch you with this hand trick on this little guy. I'm not exactly sure what type of lizard this is, but he is a nice little one. He's got some blue armpits there. But yeah, he's he's a little fatty. He's recently had a meal, which I guess probably played into the fact that I was able to catch him. And it also looks like he lost his tail at some point and has regrown it back since. But we're gonna... Um, not hold him for too long, go ahead and put him back. But yeah, he's a, he's a cute little guy. I was digging around here looking for rocks and stuff and I came across this little quartz crystal thing. I think it's quartz at least, but man, I have never seen one of those in it's natural environment. I'm gonna go wash it off real quick. If you guys ever come fishing and the fish seem to be jumping all around you, super active, happy, but they never seem to bite, that's my situation exactly right now. You can probably hear them. 
but yeah, there's tons of little fish just jumping all over the place, but none of them seem to want to bite the worm that I've put out for them so nicely. All right, scratch that last part about them not biting. Um, I just managed to accidentally catch a fish. I was walking and looking along the shore and I felt something on my rod and we have ourselves a white bass, it looks like. Quite a nice one as well. Go ahead and get it unhooked. So I'm wondering if these aren't the guys that are out there jumping and if they are, I'm wondering why they're jumping. They, Cause they just seem to be jumping for fun. Like they aren't really striking anything on top of the water and these guys are pretty big. I don't know why they'd be running from other fish. But yeah, it's quite a pretty, quite a pretty fish. We'll go ahead. Barely hooked in the lip. Should be a nice easy release like that. And these guys are part of the true bass family, unlike largemouth bass, which are just big old sunfish. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and try and catch myself a few more of them. So I'm currently out on a hike in these little rolling hills, uh, sand structure things. And I'm just looking around for uh, reptiles, like herps and whatnot, as well as little stones, because I know there's a lot of erosion going on here from all the water flow that's come down and it exposes all this old sediment. Uh, one of the coolest I've found so far, not exactly sure what type of stone it is or what type of rock it is, but it does have the consistency of flint. It might be also a volcanic rock. It also looks like it's got little marks from flint napping like the Native Americans when they had made arrowheads and whatnot. But I'm gonna keep looking around. I'd like to find some sort of fossil, considering this was underwater at one point. And I've seen lots of little lizards, but one thing about the desert is that there's definitely a range of temperatures when you're out here. During the day, you're gonna get much warmer temperatures, and then at night, it's like a 30 degree difference. It'll drop way down, and you'll be very chilly. So when you go desert camping, you have to make sure that you're prepared. just finished trying to catch a carp like the one that I did in the let's go camping episode except this time instead of using my hands I was trying to use a hand line but you know how those guys are if you can see them then they aren't gonna bite it's really really quite irritating because they're so close to you so far but I had a lot of fun on this adventure saw a lot of cool stuff it's a real neat landscape you know this area is kind of like a mix between the Badlands and Southern California and Texas all put into one my rendezvous with my ticket out of here is fairly near so I gotta get a move on and that's gonna do it for this episode I hope you guys enjoyed watching thanks for watching and until next time stay wild Oops, almost forgot you guys. You know, travel to two different, oh darn it. <laughs> All right, it's gonna, it's gonna happen this time, I promise. Well you guys just finished trying to catch some carp out of this little creek river here and it's just like the one that the, <laughs> caught, caught some fish, <laughs> oh darn. Well, you guys, just trying to... <laughs> Why do I look like a gremlin? <laughs>